Okay class, welcome back. Today we are going to learn how to determine the chemical formula for a substance by just be given its percent composition. My objective for you today is that you'd be able to calculate both empirical and molecular formula for given compounds. In saying that, let's dive into this lecture. Whether it be in analytical, theoretical, or industrial chemistry, being able to calculate how much of a specific element there is in a given substance is a necessity. Though we will not go into this concept as in depth as you would in, in these careers, in this class it will be extremely useful to be able to calculate the percent composition of a substance. The percent composition is the percent by mass of each element in a compound. For instance, if I have 100 grams of compound XY and 55 grams of that compound is element X and 45 grams of that compound is element Y, I would say I have 55% of the compound consists of element X and 45% consists of element Y. Not all compounds are going to be this easy though. Sometimes we are not even given the total mass number. If that is the case, how do we figure out the percent composition of a specific element within a compound? Well, we use the formula percent by mass equals the mass of element in one mole of a compound divided by the molar mass of the compound. All that multiplied by 100. So how does a problem using this look like then? Let's say we are trying to find out the complete percent composition of each element present within one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda. We are given that the formula for sodium hydrogen carbonate is NaHCO3. Well, my first step is to find the molar mass of our chemical formula. So we set up a molar mass table like we did in our last video find the mass of one mole of NaHCO3 and we find out that it contains 84.01 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Our next step is to take our total mass found for each element present and plug them into the percent composition equation. So let's do this first for our sodium. We found that the total mass of sodium is 22.99 grams. I would take my 22.99 grams of sodium and divide it by the molar mass of the compound, which is 84.01 grams. This would give me 0.2737. Now, in order to convert that to a percent, I'm going to multiply by 100. This gives me that sodium consists of 27.37% of sodium hydrogen carbonate, or baking soda. Next, we repeat this for the other three molecules as so. Note, we are using the total masses. So with our oxygen, we have three oxygen atoms each at 16. So that would give us a total mass of 48. Once we do this, we get that our sodium hydrogen carbonate contains 27.37% sodium, 1.2% hydrogen, 14.3% carbon, and 57.14% oxygen. To check and make sure all these calculations are correct, we can add all our percentages up if they equal 100%. Then we had correctly calculated our percent composition for each element within the compound. When a compound's percent composition is known, its formula can be calculated. When doing this, we are first going to have to determine the smallest whole number ratio of moles for each element within a compound. This is known as the empirical formula, and the number of moles we find are our subscripts in the formula. The empirical formula might or might not be the same as the actual formula. If two formulas are different, the molecular formula will always be a simple multiple of the empirical formula. For example, the molecular formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, while the empirical formula is HO, or H1O1. Both these formula have a ratio of one hydrogen atom to one oxygen atom, but they read differently. To determine the empirical formula from a percent composition, we are going to have to assume that there is 100 grams of whatever compound there is. So that means whatever percents are given are the masses of each element. So if we have a compound who contains 59.95% oxygen and 40.05% sulfur, we would assume we have 59.95 grams of oxygen and 40.05 grams of sulfur. Our next step is to convert each of these grams into moles by multiplying them by one mole of each element over the element's molar mass. So for sulfur, I would take 40 grams of sulfur over 1, and multiply it by one mole of sulfur over the molar mass of sulfur, which is 32.07 grams of sulfur. This would give me 1.249 moles of sulfur. For oxygen, I would take 59.95 grams of oxygen, 
over 1 and multiply it by 1 mole of oxygen over 16 grams of oxygen. This would give me 3.747 moles of oxygen. Since these values are not whole numbers, I would have to divide these by the smallest amount of moles that I calculated. So, since my sulfur moles are smaller than my oxygen moles, I would divide both these moles by 1.249. So, 1.249 divided by 1.249 is 1 mole of sulfur. And for my oxygen, I would divide 3.747 by 1.249, and I would get 3 moles of oxygen. Since both these numbers are whole numbers, we can stop here and use these numbers as these subscripts for our formula. This gives me S1O3, since we don't have to write down a 1. In an empirical formula, we would write SO3. Hypothetically, if on our last step for solving these empirical formulas, we did not get a whole number, then we simply multiply both moles of the elements by the same number in order to get the smallest factor that would produce a whole number. Here's a helpful hint that you might keep somewhere for quick reference. If something ends in a 0.5, then you multiply both numbers by 2. If the moles end in 0.33, then you would multiply both by 3. If one of the moles end in 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0 0.75, then you would multiply both moles by 4. And if it ends in 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, or 0 0.8, then you multiply both moles by 4. The molecular formula specifies the actual number of atoms of each element in molecules or formula units of a substance. Though some substances can have the same empirical formula, they can have different properties, and that is because despite these substances having the same empirical formula, they actually are different substances. For example, if we have the empirical formula HO, we do not know if it's actually H1O1, H2O2, or even H3O3. To determine the molecular formula of a compound, the molar mass of the compound must be determined through experimentation and compared with the masses represented by the empirical formula. For example, the molar mass of acetylene is 26.04 grams per mole, and the empirical formula for it is CH, so its mass is 13.02 grams per mole. Dividing the actual molar mass by the molar mass of the empirical formula indicates that the molar mass of acetylene is two times the mass of the empirical formula. Because the molar mass of acetylene is two times the mass represented by the empirical formula, that means that we must double our empirical formula. So, this would give us a molecular formula of C2H2. Let's work a molecular formula practice problem so that you can see how these work. Succinic acid is a substance to produced by lichens. Under chemical analysis, it is found to contain 40.68% carbon, 5.08% hydrogen, and 54.34% oxygen. It is also found that succinic acid has a molar mass of 118.1 grams per mole. Determine the empirical and molecular formula for succinic acid. My first step is to convert my percentages to masses. So, we have 40.68 grams of carbon, 5.08 grams of hydrogen, and 54.34 grams of oxygen. Next, we multiply them by 1 over the molar masses to get how many moles of each element we have. This gives me 3.387 moles of carbon, 5.04 moles of hydrogen, and 3.390 moles of oxygen. My next step is to divide all those by the least number of moles present. That is my 3.387 moles. So 3.387 divided by 3.387 is 1 mole of carbon. 5.04 divided by 3.387 is 1.5 moles of hydrogen. And 3.390 divided by 3.387 gives us roughly 1.01 moles of oxygen, which is close enough to 1 for us just to say 1 mole of oxygen. Now, since we have 1.5 moles of hydrogen, we are going to have to multiply everything by 2. This gives me 2 moles of carbon, 3 moles of hydrogen, and 2 moles of oxygen. Now we can use these numbers as our subscript in our empirical formula. So our empirical formula is C2H3O2. 
to find our molecular formula, we are going to have to find the total mass of the empirical formula. To do this, we set up our molar mass table as so, and find that this compound has a total molar mass of 59.04 grams per mole. Now we take our molar mass of our succinic acid and divide it by the molar mass of the empirical formula. So, 118.1 divided by 59.04. This gives me 2. So, we just multiply our empirical formula by 2 and we get our molecular formula of C4H6O4. Okay, so that's enough for you today. Today we learned how we can use percent composition to find the empirical formula of a substance and the empirical formula of a substance to find the molecular formula of a substance. I hope this video helped you out and keep up the good work in the classroom. See you next time.